Hello, Eight of Cups family. Welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your astrology portion of the October readings. Guys, October is really intense. It's really all about this Plutonian energy, very fitting for October, very Halloween-like. Um, but it starts out in the beginning of the month with an extremely intense new moon. Now, typically we look at new moons as an avenue of growth, initiation, inviting new things into our lives. This moon is very different. We also have four planets stationing direct this month, and a lot of our personal planets are shifting to different signs. And on top of it all, we have a super intense Mercury retrograde in Libra. So let's put it all together really quick. Here's how it's going to go. The beginning of the month, right out of the door, we're going to be triggered. The universe is really pushing us to expose some of these deep wounds that are buried. Now we're playing along with making an opposition to Chiron with this moon. Um, it is conjunct Mars. It's making a square to Pluto. Mercury is making a square to Pluto as it's in retrograde most of the month. And it's also creating a beautiful trine to Jupiter. So it's very hard to navigate between this really beautiful, hopeful Jupiterian energy and a square to Pluto. This is really where we bring up the depths of our wounds and our subconscious and we offer them up for healing. So this new moon is about releasing these old feelings, releasing these old triggers. Because Mercury is retrograde and Mercury rules the mind and how we think, it's giving us a chance to reframe this. This is an invitation for a lot of us to step out of the victim mode. Now, I don't say that like, you know, you have things happen to you in your life. That's what we're here for is this human experience. But because the bad things happen, because we've had disappointments and we start to look at life and we start to look at what fear does to us, how it makes us sell ourselves short, it stops us from participating in certain things. It stops us from deepening our connections. And some of these old wounds are going to get triggered. And we're going to have a choice because Libra, a lot of this energy is about choice. And we've got the North Node in Gemini. And it's getting ready to finish up here and move into Scorpio Taurus axis. We've got a lot of things we've got to close out rather quickly in the end of this year. Jupiter is going direct. He's going to finish up his tour in Aquarius. And by December, he moves back into Pisces. And so we're really left with Saturn, which is also going direct in Aquarius, which really does talk about the healing of the collective. There's an opportunity here. We can resonate with those old wounds. We could play this out in a lot of different ways. We can make choices to stay in a place of fear and to play it safe, or we can tap into that Jupiterian energy and allow ourselves to grow. When we start to see these situations from a different light, growth is always inevitable, right? So we have these really beautiful energies and because we've got all the energy going on in Libra right now, there is a lot about partnerships at stake here. Now it doesn't have to be romantic, it's just simply the partnerships, the friendships that we hold in our lives and how we view them, how we approach them, what we're willing to give to them. Some of these relationships this month are going to be make or break because we're going to have this mentality. For some of us, there's some things that are playing out that seem very familiar and because we've been there, done that, we're not going to want to do it again. And so there's this fierce independence that comes through, especially by the end of the month as we have the full moon in Aries. This is an energy of wanting to go it alone, wanting to, it doesn't matter what other people think or say, and that's all part of this, finding our sovereignty this month, figuring out who we are and what we want and committing to it. And we're going to see other people triggering us. We're going to see a lot of projections in other people. And Mercury retrograde in Libra can have a very sharp 
tongue at times and I have to laugh because my girlfriend just got me this as a birthday present this cup I don't know if you guys could see it sorry for what I said while well, Mercury was in retrograde I think a lot of this month has to do with our ability to find grace which means not only are we learning how to accept ourselves we're also learning how to accept other people and their choices in their lives now you look around at the collective and one of the easiest way for me to frame this example for you is some people are triggered because people don't want to wear masks, right? I have no opinion on this. You do you. But it triggers some people. And we don't know why. We don't know where that comes from, that internal triggering. And then other people are triggered at your lack of fear the lack of, of respect for what's going on. And it's really all about this judgment period. We're judging everybody. When you find grace, not only do you have the ability to do what your heart and your soul tells you to do, but you also have compassion to understand the choices of other people. Now, I said it's a karmic month. When we have planets moving direct, that means that there's forward motion but usually what happens first we will have pluto station direct then we will have saturn then jupiter and towards the end of the month mercury will move direct in libra this is big energy because there's a lot about karma that comes into play what have you learned what's the risk and reward jupiter wants to give right he's moving into pisces so there's a preparation we've got to get ready for this great renewed faith. We had a taste of Jupiter in Pisces earlier in the summer, late May and June before he retrograded back into Aquarius. Those storylines were introduced. Where do we want to take it from here? Saturn being another very karmic planet stationing direct is going to be all about our inner integrity. If we're not in the right relationships, if we're not in the right job scenarios, if they are not a reflection of our true integrity and what our soul wants and needs from us, and part of our destiny is at play here, then these things are ultimately going to crumble. Now, I'm not saying that everybody's going to leave or quit their jobs in October, but we're looking at the collective, we're looking at these vaccine mandates and we're looking at a drove of society that is changing their career paths so of course there's a lot of change in the sky and with that amount of intense change comes the idea of vulnerability and you're going to find yourself vacillating between vulnerability and tremendous bravery and courage this month and those two go hand in hand so wonderfully to look at the positive side of partnerships, we can find such a beautiful connection this month to people that are integral in our lives and do share that integrity. There's so much growth here if you are in a very supportive relationship, if you have very supportive friends, these will be a source of strength because it's so much nicer to go through these changes when you have other people that believe in you. So don't underestimate the support that you can get from other people and don't underestimate what your support to them means as well. Vulnerability is a big issue for all of us because we've all been in that place in our lives where we've had to be vulnerable, where we've been hurt. Chiron is gonna remind us of those wounds, but Chiron is here to teach us how to overcome it and that full moon conjunct chiron at the end of the month is where it all starts to make sense what isn't working what is working the relationships that we want what we want our futures to look like what we want to do with our careers how we want to invest our time what our priorities are remember we've been under this tremendous internal shift for several months as these planets move direct, and especially into November and December, the action is just gonna take place. These changes are gonna unfold with very little effort anyways. So it's better to take October to do the internal healing, to face these old wounds and to reframe them. And it's important to understand that grace means that 
whatever your imperfections are, whatever your mistakes were in the past, they were here as a teaching moment and we're meant to evolve from them. Nothing ever happens to us in this lifetime that will ever, it's never meant to keep us small. It's never meant to convince us that we aren't capable or we're not deserving of the things that we truly love. Guys, desire is born within us because it's meant to lead us towards our destiny. When you desire something, a certain type of relationship, a certain type of career or job, when you desire to have a child or to buy a new home, these are all callings on your path. And so the universe doesn't want you to play it small anymore. It wants you to listen to that. It wants you to start taking those risks. So October is such an important month to go within, to, to take that retrospective moment and to understand what it is inside of us that causes any kind of hesitation or delays or where we don't believe in ourselves. That desire is important. Mars is a major player in both of these moons. Where it is part of our soul's integrity, we have the ability to overcome and grow. Jupiter and Mars together is the greatest form of ambition and the universe is so supportive of it. So pay attention to your inner callings, pay attention to that inner healing. When you get triggered this month, and you will, you have to know where it's coming from. You have to know the universe just wants more from you. And that these old stories really have to be put to bed so we can move on in this new growth. Guys, I hope you enjoy your readings. October is a tremendously healing month, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Cancer, welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your cards for October. So really quick, before I jump into these cards, I want to talk to you for a second about Pluto. You and Capricorn have very similar cards here in this reading and as well, um, which makes sense, you're on the same axis. So you're going through very similar, you know, transits. Capricorn is hosting Pluto in their first house. You, however, are hosting Pluto in your seventh. And there's a big emphasis this month, especially on the fourth and tenth house axis for you with the moons as well as this opposition between Mars and the sun opposing Chiron. And it really is an opportunity for us to look at our relationships in the past and how we've changed. See, we've gone through this tremendous transition, this transformation. And in the past, we probably fell into old habits or patterns of giving our power away. And Pluto is reaching this end kind of the end degrees of Capricorn and as he stations to go direct early on in the month of October while at the same time this Mars Chiron opposition a lot of things are going to come to the surface now I don't see these things that are coming to the surface really reflecting the current circumstance I more so see it as kind of a review of where you've been and how far you've come, right? Let's not forget we also have Saturn and Jupiter moving direct in your eighth house, a very Plutonian Scorpio energetic house. This is a house of healing. This is a house of alchemy. And this is where we turn all of those pain and disappointment we kind of alchemize it into our empowerment we turn it into our evolution now you this month you're coming out as a queen of cups very same card came out for capricorn 
And for me, this is a form of very pure love, both for yourself and as well for the people in your life. Cancer, this is your card and this tells me that you have found a, a, a way of becoming your authentic self. A way of expressing love without fear, without the conditions. And this is a really beautiful energy of acceptance of who you are. And I always say when the Queen of Cups comes out, it's an opportunity for us to really fall in love with ourselves. And once we do that, the opportunities are endless. Now your environment is that of the hanged man. And this, a lot of times, like when this card would come out, I would feel frustrated, like really? Like stagnation, things are on hold, outside circumstances are kind of holding the deal up, making, making you feel like nothing is moving. But yet the hangman is a blessing because he gives the environment. Now, I don't really see this as your energy. I see this as the environment. It could represent maybe somebody else in your life or a scenario or a situation that probably feels like it is not moving, but it is in the intention that there are adjustments that have to be made first before you can move forward which is ultimately the change of perspective that happens with the hanged man. When we start looking at our situations differently, we can start to detach from them on a personal level. We could see things differently and gain a new perspective, which really ultimately can change our circumstances in the material plane. Because there's an opportunity to forgive yourself and to accept yourself and to accept those old situations and accept that whatever they were, they got you exactly to this place that you are now, which is a beautiful place to be, milk and honey. So let's talk about this five of pentacles, king of swords, eight of swords. I feel like this is an old version of yourself. Now, let's not forget like that eighth house placement, that alchemy. When and because you have Aquarius there in the eighth house and this king of swords representing that Aquarius energy is kind of the saving grace of the Cancer archetype. Cuz Cancer is known to play it safe, not really put yourself out there so much. I mean, albeit you are a cardinal energy, you don't fear new starts, new beginnings. You don't fear starting things. But you definitely play it safe. And this King of Swords, a Saturn Jupiter in the eighth house is teaching you how to detach from the outcome and expectations. And this is a time for empowerment because it's an opportunity to break free from this Five of Pentacles, Eight of Swords energy, right? Eight of Swords is where we feel stuck. This came out for Capricorn as well. There's a, a, a blockage or an inability to move out of this place that you are currently in, probably due to some form of a lack mentality coming from this Five of Pentacles. And I see this as the old wounds that are holding you back from walking into your future. The King of Swords is all about that future energy. As the ability to detach himself from the past in order to see the future from a very high perspective, to see the evolution. And once you understand that the disappointments in the past six of pentacles in reverse were merely to get you on a path to get you here. In other words, if other people didn't give, if other people rejected or disappointed you in some way, 
it was all part of the journey. And there's nothing really that we have to hold personally. We don't measure our self-worth and our value by the way that other people have treated us in the past. When we're participating in relationships, we don't just simply believe or give up on love completely because we encountered a negative situation in which somebody cheated on you or somebody lied to you, you know? It's not human nature to just throw in the towel and believe that this is how it's always going to be. And Cancer, let's not forget who you are. Let's not forget your archetype is of love and compassion and care. That you have this really beautiful ability to love unconditionally. It is within you, within your soul. And so to believe that you are going to live a life in which you don't ever get to express that love seems silly when you look at it from a higher perspective. And I sort of feel like this five of pentacles is sort of tied up to this full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. And if you feel like you've been rejected or isolated or cast out in some way in the past, this feeling of vulnerability might come out, right? Vulnerability, like you see these, these people are literally like walking with a limp. And this is exposing your weakness, your limp, exposing your vulnerability. And it is that vulnerability which is deeply tied to the ego, right? The ego isn't always like related to cockiness and pride. It's also where we don't allow ourselves to participate in the really beautiful parts of life because we don't feel like we deserve them. We don't feel like we're worthy of them. And so I see this as kind of like the spiritual limp of your ego that you've been dragging around for way too long. And once this gets exposed, because of the knowledge, because of the work, because of the ability to detach emotionally from that, you get to close that chapter, judgment card, center of the reading. There is something within you that is being awakened in terms of your self-worth and what you are deserving of. And because it comes out next to this magician card, I often say when we see the magician card, it's a reminder of what we bring to the table. You have all the tools. You have everything you need. There's nothing that the magician is seeking. He is just simply creating. And when I say that, bringing, you know, you bring all of this to the table, then we have this milk and honey card, card number 51, which is clearly an abundance energy. We have this Ace of Cups here that's underneath this Six of Pentacles, Five of Pentacles. Ace of Cups is an invitation to open your heart. It's an invitation to believe in this milk and honey. Believe in yourself. Believe that you are worthy of this. And the universe is waiting for you to decide. Right, which is why the environment or the situation, a job, a relationship, another person is showing the outside forms of hesitation. You're hesitating 
some form of a commitment or jumping in, right? The fool in reverse. There is love here and yet you hesitate. And you hesitate because there is still these doubts and these fears that live inside of you. And this month is going to be very clear to you. Judgment card, Jupiter going direct in your eighth house. And can I just, I just want to say this, this is kind of just coming to me intuitively, but even like this card here, the five of pentacles, there is another person, right? There's a lot of people here in this card as well. And I just feel like there's an emphasis on the importance of companionship. Ace of Cups, the universe is going to show you why this is such a critical part of your destiny. If you've been somebody that has experienced traumas or really unhealthy relationships, and this can even be like your relationship to finances. If you've never believed that there is nothing you could do that could earn you the kind of money and stability that you've always dreamt of that's just simply like the story you tell yourself so that you don't disappoint yourself as an astrologist i see this a lot i have clients that say well yeah but i have like you know that one aspect so my life is destined to like not be happy or i'll never have money or i'll never have love in my life and that's just simply not true because when you have squares or adversity in life is where you grow the most. So it may not come easily to you, but that means that you will value it even more once you achieve it. But it sure is scary, isn't it? Fool in reverse. King of Swords. There's even like this level of emotional detachment in a form of avoidance like avoiding the gift the universe is giving you because you simply can't bear to experience this again which is how you let pride get in your way remember that your thoughts become things and if you continue and some cancers will you will continue to tell yourself these old stories that you can't break free from this karma, you can't break free from the storyline. But if you tell yourself you can, if you believe in yourself, if you value yourself, and if you acknowledge the things that you bring to the table, then when you take the higher perspective, you look back and you go, well, of course I'm deserving of this. Look at everything that I have to give. The universe knows what you have to give. It knows what you have to offer. You're in a much stronger place than you realize. Most likely, this King of Swords might be somebody who is definitely seeing what you are bringing to the table. This King of Swords may be linked to the hangman who is beginning to change his perspective because you are beginning to disintegrate the fears within you. And what I love about this reading is we have this page of wands here at the end, it was a very same placement for Capricorn, which is a curiosity to follow your heart. And he doesn't have baggage and he doesn't carry a lot of crap from the past. He just simply follows his heart. And you have a choice this month on, you know, judgment card in the center. 
on how you want to proceed. My advice to you is to not really take anything personally. If other people don't want to commit, if other people don't see your value, it just means why would you settle for that anyways? Underneath this hangman, we have the crossing initiation. See, the universe is pushing the hanged man. The situation is getting pushed through with an ounce of divine timing, and it's really kind of all about your evolution. And I love that we have this page of wands here, and then we have the spark here. There's something that's growing within your heart, Cancer. There's an opening, an idea that comes and, and you start to like really fall in love with it. And even though it's so scary and it's so scary that you're not sure you want to take that leap of faith, like in the Capricorn reading, I kind of guided it towards like the career end of things. Like you, you want to start your own business, but it's so scary to quit that full time nine to five guaranteed paycheck kind of gig. But the universe is offering you something to wake you up and make you understand that your life can be so abundant. And that what you have to offer is so beautiful. If it isn't working out with somebody or if the opportunity isn't coming it's not the right thing because when the right thing comes along the crossing initiation the spark when the right thing comes along you won't be able to resist it will feel like an awakening bottom of the deck we have the three of pentacles in reverse the world card and the four of swords we are really breaking down some very heavy walls within us There's such a karmic ending and a new beginning starting. It's almost like this fresh slate. And I think for some of us in the past, relationships or jobs or creative projects carried like this feeling of unattainability. Felt like too much work, too much of a hassle. And it's a reminder that when the path of least resistance shows up at your door, these things are never going to feel like work or sacrifice, right? Like when you're, with, when you're with the right person, they never make you feel unworthy. When you're in the right environments, you're never feeling isolated. Cancer has to get themselves out of the negative environments and allow themselves to fully immerse themselves into the nourishing ones. The ones that feel light and happy. The ones that kind of enhance your creativity the ones that allow you to be more authentically you so that you're in environments where you can be the queen of cups where you can give unconditional love you could feel it come back to you and if you're in scenarios where somebody's like really on the fence it might be time to start to walk away and get curious about what is new 
right? Don't let pride get in your way. A reminder that what is meant for you should never feel forced. You are the milk and honey cancer. You are the milk and honey and you are a spark. Meaning somebody is really growing in emotions or feelings or passion towards you. And if that is not the case, allow yourself to get into new situations where that is possible. Okay? That means not entertaining the ex, you know, like the narcissistic ex that comes back into your life. If you're feeling like a bout of loneliness or something, do not go back. Do not go back to those old scenarios because you know better. You know how much you have to give. Why would you put yourself in an environment that makes you feel like you are less than what you are? Look, I can't say it enough. Card number 51, breaking down to, to a six. And then the spark is seven. When you love yourself... The love comes towards you. When you love yourself, you become a magnet. It may not go exactly how you planned. It may not be with the exact person you thought it would be. The universe is putting you exactly where you need to be in exactly the right environment so that this can happen. Just a really beautiful reading. All right, Cancer, I'm going to leave it there. I do hope that you have a really beautiful month of October. I will be in um, maybe once or twice with some pick a pile readings. Otherwise, I do hope you have a wonderful month and I will see you very soon for the November readings. Take care, guys.